So here we go, another day, another install. It's a beautiful day today. You wouldn't know it's January. It's actually quite warm. And I've got a big box sitting here. This is an Exmoor trim rubber matting system. It goes over the seat box, the tunnel and the floors as well. And I can't tell you how excited I am to install it today. I've been wanting it for about four years. So without waffling on too much, let's get into the install. I did go up to the factory to pick this up. Obviously you can order it yourself and it is delivered. Um, I had a little look in there to make sure everything was there when I was up there. But as I'm only about an hour and a half away from Exmoor Trim, I thought go up and have a visit and say hello to everyone and pick this up while I'm there. Right, take a look at that. It's all sort of jammed in there a little bit. It looks like at the moment, you've got a couple of other bits to go with it. Let's take a look at this together. So right here, you've got the leather gator that goes over the handbrake. That's a really nice feature. I didn't realize that I was getting that as well. That's really cool. And you've also got the gator here that goes over the gear sticks. So for the high range, low range and the main gear stick, that's a nice sort of a leather effect there as well. And it's also quite insulated, it's really thick foam there. So hopefully that will help with sound insulation as well. That's nice, I didn't realize I was getting that. Nice little bit of an addition there as well. I think it goes all the way up. So it will come out a bit longer. That's a really nice bit of kit. Look at that. Oh yes, I remember mentioning this actually. There you've got your washers, trim clips and bolts. They are new spaces for the seats to go in, new black bolts as well. That's a nice bit of additional kit as well. I didn't realize I was getting that. Track that there for now. And let's get into the main bit. Cable ties, of course. I'm sure we'll work that out when we get there. Starting off small, we've got the piece that goes just below the fuse box. Fuse box goes here, and this wraps around the uh, sort of gearbox tunnel. Gearbox tunnel goes here. That's a nice piece there, because always there's bits of raggedy edges on my old one, and I've also got some new seat box um, covering from uh, actual genuine secondhand Land Rover ones. This will just come around and neaten it up nicely. That's a nice bit of kit. Obviously, just saw the gators just then, and uh, they're the smaller bits, and you've obviously got the bolts and uh, washers as well. So right here, it's hard to see it properly, but this is the part that goes over the seat box. Obviously your cubby box goes here, left seat, right seat, and then here's where the gearbox tunnel goes. Right now it's not holding its shape because it's lying on the floor. The things to point out are that some bits come semi-scored. Uh, you'll have to cut it out with a standing knife yourself. Some places there are sort of areas for holes to be cut for your cubby box. But obviously what they need to do is accommodate for different gearboxes different setups if you don't have a cubby box yourself and you know just different things because there's one system for all. What's nice is it does come pre-scored and pre-cut in most of the areas that everyone will need so here but to stop it from tearing too much when it's in transport they do leave a bit sort of connected there so with common sense you know to just go through that with a standing knife but that'd be nice and easy to do when we get there. So there you go there's a little look at the underside nice to see the Exmoor trim logo there and a few areas where we're gonna have to cut out as well. It says here remove for Puma so obviously if you've got a Puma truck you remove those that's what I was saying about earlier. It is a piece for all different vehicles and here you've got four holes that can be cut with a hole saw or a Stanley knife and then neatened up later. More sort of removable bits here, holes for your handbrake on both sides left and right hand drive but just a nice bit of kit super solid and I'm looking forward to getting it in. Right, so here what we have, as you can probably see, as this one's actually holding its shape, is the piece that goes over the gearbox tunnel and then sits down on the floors where your feet go. You really get a sense here of how thick it is and how durable it is by just how it's staying up itself. And uh, hopefully the sound will be um, sort of deadened quite a bit. Thankfully this bit goes and sits in the footwell and looks very OEM, I'd say. It's a big upgrade from what you get, but will make a huge difference to the actual vehicle. You could run this just like this as a sort of base level. You can obviously pressure wash it out if you're running a truck that's like a farm truck, or you could run it with carpets, any mats of your choice, or the rubber Exmoor trim ones as well, because I'll probably put those in over the top and it means that you can just take those out to clean. But this is a nice sort of solid sealed place where you could put your feet down and then just wash it out and clean it as it goes and it'll just help with everything and I'm really excited to get it in. So what I've done there is just strip everything off I have given it all a good clean sort of just a brushing for now I might give it a spray and a wipe but obviously 
it's not great so you can only go so far i've sort of removed the sort of harder dirt and on a sort of grit from there use the brush and the hoover as you saw what i've also done is used a wire wheel on the angle grinder to go across this tunnel here which had some like quite thick foam on it very soft but about 10 mil thick or so i just think uh it's the best idea to do that because obviously this new kit is designed specifically to go in here uh, and fit very well so i feel like that would have been a bit too thick and would have uh, misshapen the tunnel there so i took that off so now it's down to just the tunnel again obviously a little bit less in sound insulation but this stuff is brilliant so hopefully that will be good so next up what i'm going to do is bring the seat box in and do a test fit and see how it lays down um hopefully can get that down and then see what it looks like with all the holes to line up and uh can start marking out places i need to cut so here we are then uh i've got the seat box section here very heavy great solid bit of kit um I'm just gonna lay this in first so there you go got it lying in there just for now as a sort of test fit it's starting to look good already which is really nice uh, one thing that we're going to have to address is the handbrake there. I feel like I'm going to have to remove it and then uh, drill a couple of holes in there. You can see here there is already some divots in there, there, there and there for the cubby box. I'm going to use my hole saw just to cut through those really nicely and then we'll work on doing the bits that are custom for Boris. So here's the winch isolator switch I mentioned and there is a hole for some cables. So these two are the ones I'm going to address first. So let's get cracking. So one thing you're gonna to have to be careful for is cutting the holes in the wrong place. And uh, as you can see, I've made a mistake in the first one. So what I've done is just widened it up a bit there. And now I'm just gonna go and neaten it in with the Stanley knife, making sure to be careful, obviously. But that just goes through there really easy. Nice oval hole there. And I can just say that potentially we were making a hole for future cables if we need to make that hole any bigger. But that's pretty neat to me, not, not too displeased with that. And uh, now it's time to uh, just cut down the middle here and just go through the Stanley knife just so we can wrap that around the cables there. Under here, there are some cuts uh, and you can see it's nice and easy to know when you've got it in here that uh, this is the R380 bit to remove. I'm gonna go through there with the Stanley knife and that fits nice and easily. Next up is this section here, which is for the isolation switch. And I'm gonna go a little bit smaller on there because I think I can actually get that right this time. So thankfully that one's drilled a little bit better there. I didn't have to like lift it up too much. I could feel where that was and drill the hole nice and neatly. And you can see the size is pretty good. Not completely centered, but I'm happy with that. I have to say it's probably not a recommended thing to do it in situ like this. Obviously you have to be careful with your hands when you're drilling and also it'd be better to take it out and put it in place. Thankfully though, doing this, I feel that you're slightly better at be able to place it you don't have to mark it themselves you can literally just do it there and then and you can see it's a bit quicker this way but obviously you can do it both ways right here i have the cables coming out from underneath as you saw earlier uh, and unfortunately they root out just here which is annoying because i don't want to cut down here because this is a nice folding part so i'm thinking maybe coming in from here and then cutting out a circle wherever the bits need to go so maybe cutting this section out here and going back so that means that this bit should stay slightly intact still fold there which is nice so it looks like this section needs to come out here and i think what i'm going to do instead of using the hole saw i'm just going to cut a section out with the stanley bit So for me, I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously, this is not a genuine Land Rover option you'd have to do. Uh, it'd be nice and neat to actually cut out a section here in the uh, sliding piece, make a U-bend, and then it comes out of there. But for now, I've got it like this. I wish I could have changed that in the past, but we are what we are, and I feel like this looks good. That looks absolutely fine to me. So it's feeling like this side is actually looking really nice. Uh, that's hammered onto there. So now it's time to move on to the other side. So first up, I've chosen to do the handbrake. That is offsetting the rubber mat the most, and I feel like I wanna get that done and out of the way. I'm gonna cut a slot in down here and then wrap it round, and then hopefully that covers it enough. 
just cut around the handbrake there and it left a few jagged marks here and there but not too bad you're going to be putting that rubber boot down or the one provided with the exmoor trim kit the leather one and that will neaten it all out and for me i'm not necessarily a perfectionist it looks a lot better than before and i think that's good enough for me Next up, we've got down here, there is a vent for the diesel heater. This is going to be a little bit of a tricky one because it's going to take the biggest hole saw I have. Uh, I'm going to have to try and find it there. Let me just make sure that the hole saw I have is going to be the right size. Yeah, as I said before, you can see the difference there, uh, a bit bigger, and it means you've got a bit of room, wiggle room for the hole there to uh, attach the hose as well. But take a look at that, not too bad. The hole's not necessarily in the worst place either. Obviously got a bit of rubber in there, but generally I'm quite happy with that and uh, just neaten up this edge. Coming into this, I was a bit daunted by cutting some of the custom holes, but generally I found it pretty fine. I found cutting it in place to be easier, not safer, and it turned out to be, for me, the best way to do it. As you can see, most of the holes work quite well. Some of them down here, maybe not quite as neat, but in the end, it will all neaten up. Another thing to mention is once the section over the footwells and the tunnel is on, it will all snug up to the seat box and hold it all in to stop some of this going on. So right now I'm going in to fit this fuse box slash tunnel box section and uh, I'm not sure if it's going to work with this section of matting here but we'll see how it goes and uh, adjust if we need to. So as you can see here it is loosely in. I feel that it is going to be held in even better with the floor section as well so I'll wait to get that in and then sort of finalise that bit there as well. So here we are, hopefully final piece of the puzzle. <laughs> Just gonna pop it down there. So that's really good. It's really nice and tight in there and all of the other bits that were slightly loose and sort of hanging out still, that's really squashed them in and holding them nicely in place. So let's move on to the other side. So basically that's it now. Both sides are in and the tunnel box is over as well, which is nice. What I'm going to do now, as it's quite a tight fit over the actual gear stick gator there, what I'm going to do is spray it with some cleaner here. I've got sort of a soapy mix in there and go in and around this sort of gap and then use my hammer covered in tape to sort of try and knock it down around there because it is pretty tight. So everything is getting pretty much there now. It's all starting to fit in. All it needs to do now is like bed in and uh, get some of those wrinkles out. But that bottom mat there really has finished it off and pushed all the pieces in and sort of finished it to the standard that I wanted it to be. Next up, all we have to do is cut a couple of holes here for the cubby box. All I'm gonna do is cut across. I don't want to cut the holes out because we don't necessarily need to. And on the sections here, down here and the same on that panel down there. There is uh, a little section to cut out so you can lift these up. So I'm just gonna cut that now. There's just a tiny bit here left to unscore effectively. Run the Stanley in and down the side there. That's that one done. One down below there. And then you should be able to pull this bit up. There you are. So now you can access underneath the seat if you need to and then this section goes over the clip even though i've not got one there and then that sits down nice and neatly really neat still folding there at the back even though i've used this section to cut out the cables there so there we go with those few bits done we are finished with the install next up all we need to do is put the seat boxes in using the new bolts new spacers which looks nice and neat and also just make sure that everything's sitting nicely in place uh, let's do that now and then we'll chuck on these sills after. So here we go, back in with the seats. There we are. First things first, I just want to show you what it comes with. Just a simple black bolt, this is an M10 and then there is two of these spaces for each corner depending on the height you need.
So one thing I just discovered for myself, um, I hadn't actually drilled the holes for the cubby box yet as I knew it was a sort of custom where they went. And unfortunately, uh, the holes that have been pre-made there isn't where mine were effectively. They're the right spacing, but I have sat mine a little bit further forward away from this sort of speaker area here. So it is custom. Uh, I didn't quite realize at the time. So I did make a little hole there, which isn't in the right spot. But as you can see, I amended it and it's all going to be hidden anyway. So not too bad and uh, works out in the end. So with those final few jobs done and a little bit of a wipe down, everything is finished. The matting system's in. Obviously it takes a bit of work because you have to take everything out, give everything a clean and also have to do the customization yourself. But generally the job is not hard. It is just a little bit laborious, just taking things in and out. And obviously it's a new sort of technique you have to learn because uh, it's not something you usually do, but it is one of those things that once you've done it, it is done and you don't have to do it again. I just love how it coats everything with this one solid piece of rubber or two effectively and it means that you have a new flooring sort of like a new modern car would have it means you've got this as a base and you can put mats on this if you want what i'm going to do is get my exmor trim rubber mats give those a clean and put these down on top of this so you sort of effectively use this as a floor and you can clean it out like that obviously it looks absolutely brilliant in my opinion but it also does a fantastic job it is a solid very sand deadening bit of kit and in a couple of months from now in April we are going to Scotland and then we're going to do a round trip once we're up there and come back and obviously being down in Devon it is probably an 11 hour or so drive just to get to Scotland so it will be tested to its limits there I think as I said previously it's been about four years of me wanting this but since they brought their new system in this one I wanted it even more and I'm so happy that I was able to get this one and install it. I hope this video has helped you obviously it was one of my classic sort of install videos but not a how-to necessarily I tried to be quite detailed but obviously there are things here and there that are different on all vehicles so I'll keep that in mind for yours if you have either got one yourself or think of getting one make sure to hit the link in the description below and head to the Exmoor Trim website and also if you are considering either of those two things do check their video out on YouTube and subscribe to their channel as well. They have some fantastic videos on how to install it and how to do the neatest job possible for your vehicle. Obviously, some people have a much newer car that they're more proud of and they love the sort of level of detail that I don't necessarily do. This for me is perfect, but maybe for you is not. So do check that out if you are wanting a little bit more advice as well. So with all that said, it's time to end the video. I'll leave you with a bit of music, a few more shots of this, and I'll see you next time.